good morning again today. Uh, uh, yeah, it's raining and I hope it will, some good information will pour down on every one of you today and I hope I have a small portion already in the first presentation. Uh, my name is Mutash. I am a barcode forensic. I work for AIDC department of uh, GS1, one of 111 offices that the GS1 organization has uh, around the globe. Uh, and as I said, uh, a national office or office is in uh, Uganda. And no, I'm not an agent of any kind. Uh, AI, AIDC stands for uh, Automation um, Automatic Identification and Data Capture. And GS1 is not for profit organization uh, that develops, manages, and maintains the standards, the system of standards for automatic identification and electronic data interchange. Um, my topic is verification of 2D barcodes or, or 2D codes um, because it, basically 2D codes has nothing to do with, with bars, uh, dots. Um, and I hope at the end of my presentation you have a better idea uh, if this is what you need. Um, basically, that's, that's what you know. Linear barcode on right side, to the code on left side, what's the difference? Uh, the information in barcode is the same on all heights. It's, it's obvious, but in, in 2D code, in real 2D code, uh, there is information uh, in each and every dot that is used uh, in, in its matrix. Uh, PDF 417 is something in between. Yes, it is a 2D code, but it's specific because it's composed of lines that are stacked, uh, and these lines are, uh, can be compared to barcodes. So we have many barcode sets, and the, the main benefit of this is that um, this code can be scanned with a simple linear scanner. The majority of the scanners used today in the environment are linear. Uh, but those scanners are not good for, uh, for true 2D codes. Uh, here are some of those, but you know that Spotlight is just on first two, on two R code and data matrix today. Mm, if we would put them in ring in, in red corner, that would be data matrix code, and in blue corner, that would be two R code. Uh, would such fight be useful? Pro probably not, because each, each of them has their specific value and field uh, of application. Uh, that is primarily used. If you compare them, uh, that's the same data, you see the, what's encoded in these two codes. Uh, it's obvious that data matrix is it's, uh, it's smaller, it can be from 30 to 60 percent smaller for the same data and the same X model, that's the element size, uh, that's, that's the element size in, in the code. At least for my eyes, uh, QR code on left it's, it's more pretty. <laughs> I think you agree with that. Uh, probably that's the reason why, uh, why it's so popular in, um, in, in marketing and uh, B2C communication nowadays. Uh, we see a few exam examples here of its use. Um, and three of them you, you recognize uh, by, by these fields are QR codes and just one uh, very small data matrix in here. Uh, yeah, even politicians uh, like to use it, uh, but you see later that uh, the information encoded here uh, is not so smart as it should be. Uh, by 2D codes, uh, there was a need to get a lot of information encoded for automatic 
uh, capture. And this is the symbology that started our, our story. If you have noticed, uh, that this story for us goes for 40 years now. It all started when an association of retailers in America at Tender picked this symbology uh, to be used for identifying all retail items. Uh, if you pick any, any item in the store, you'll see uh, a barcode there that allows scanning at the um, The next symbology on, on banana, this, this is uh, a data bar. Uh, it's similar to PDF already presented, and if you check the data encoded, you'll see that same data is encoded on half the space as EIM UPC symbology provides. Uh, if you go a step further, for the 2D codes, you see much more information on just one tenth of the size of uh, uh, most widely used barcode. How far can we go uh, with uh, capacity uh, that, uh, that can be encoded in 2D codes? Uh, this is the text encoded, you see, and the code itself. Uh, if, if you want to have decent size, readable size uh, for humans, you see there is not much text encoded. But the, the elements in, in the code are quite small. So that can be some limitation of how much data can be encoded into the. Theoretically, it can go up to a few thousand characters, but again, um, it, it uh, data has to be limited, uh, otherwise many issues arises when scanning such barcodes or, or two D codes. Uh, these are the words from the author of The Little Prince. Uh, it's important to, to take note of this. If I would add anything, it would, I would spoil perfection. But uh, please keep in mind uh, that you will not get better code if more information will be encoded. It's, uh, it's probably just the other way around. Few more words on capacity. If you know Douglas Adam work you know what's the answer to life uni universe in everything. You don't even need to, to scan the code. You know, that anybody knows what the result will be? Exactly. <laughs> uh, has anybody, anybody already tried to scan this uh, code presented? Uh, was it successful? Yes. Okay, but you're not sitting far away. Uh, so probably from further down, uh, if, if uh, the optics or focus on your uh, mobile phone is not the best, probably it will be hard to scan. So what is 42? Tells us not much. So again, we, we have to find a compromise about uh, all data that can be pushed into to the code and uh, how, how will we simplify the data encoded? Um, I don't want to bore you with this, but uh, you see the same code that was already uh, presented, the one with the, uh, the, one with the latent text. Uh, the matrix size is 48 by 48. And you see the capacity of alpha numeric or numeric characters that, that can be encoded. It looks fine and enough for, for most applications, but again, you get uh, quite complex code. A practical use of code of this size. Uh, this is a prescription. Uh, I got it from Serbia. We are not so advanced in Slovenia yet to, to use a 2D code uh, on, on prescription. You can get basic information about data is encoded, 
Uh, and you see on a matrix that is 2 centimeters by 2 centimeters, uh, 44 by 44 dots, uh, 144 char characters can be encoded. Uh, what is interesting is this technology is still new. You see that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, at least 6 stamps on that were needed to process this document. Uh, so I think uh, it could be done better by simply scanning this code, a lot of this can be performed. But we are all still uh, learning uh, about getting best of uh, new technologies. Uh, an, an example that is uh, more widely used is encoding URL. I have two examples from our web page. Uh, the top is uh, from, uh, from the front page and the, the bottom is from one of the sub pages. Uh, you see this data is not so smart because uh, at least part of it is duplicated. Uh, it could be done much better and this is an example of a smart, I will call it smart URL that can be used. So simply we encode uh, all the alphanumeric characters uh, in a number. Uh, you see that uh, we had 78, I think it was 78, yeah, 78 characters encoded uh, and we came down to 16. That's important if you want to keep, uh, not the, the code itself small, but if you, want, if you want to keep the metrics small. If you keep the metrics small, you have bigger elements inside and you'll have less problems printing it or scanning it. Yeah, even QR codes can, can grow much bigger. Uh, you see how far we can go. Uh, the biggest one can be 177 by 177 uh, in size. And for the code uh, that is presented on this slide, uh, you see the capacity, <coughs> the biggest capacity for numeric volume and the smallest capacity for alphanumeric volume, depending on the level of uh, redundancy that is used in code. Uh, I'll, I'll have a few words more on this uh, later. And please note the biggest code can be used if you have smart URL uh, as a green example on previous slide. You see that's, that's the area that would be needed for 18 characters. Codes come in different sizes. The shape is more or less the same, but the size uh, can vary. So if, if you have supersized codes, how can we assess, uh, assess the, the quality, uh, the scannability of them? Any idea? Anybody already tried this? Well, yeah, I, I, I've seen a few of, them, of you uh, using your mobile phones in cameras. You see that uh, sometimes that's the only option you can use. It, it simplifies a lot. Uh, A few more examples. Uh, <laughs> I see that you try to, uh, to scan, but if anybody succeeds in scanning any of this, please shout loud so uh, we'll know that that is scannable. <laughs> but if you think about it, uh, what, you know if you scan few codes that it's very important uh, that you have your scanning device at more or less right angle uh, to the surface where the code is produced. So the top uh, two and the bottom left are not scannable unless you, if you are high and fly in any type of device you are using. Uh, there is an interesting story on, on this, um, for this picture. Uh, the owner wanted that Google Earth would identify this code. <laughs> and eventually he succeeded. Uh, you can check, check it, but unfortunately, I don't know the coordinates to help you with. Uh, 
if any of these codes can be scanned from a decent distance, it's bottom, bottom right. It looks awful, but it can be scanned. Before going into some details on, on verification itself, I have to go to verification if that's, uh, if, if that's my topic I want to cover. Uh, please keep this in mind that 2D codes are robust. Many issues arise when uh, these codes are printed at very small size. And basically, when printing black and white on paper, you will have no problem of any kind. These are examples that are used uh, in marketing. Uh, the size is normally from few uh, centimeters up. Uh, you see one from the, the retail store, one of the PepsiCo of box uh, bottle. Uh, the middle is from uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken Drink, and this is from Heinz. Uh, bottom of ketchup just to have an impression of how, the, how big these codes are. Probably you have been waiting for this, at least if you have been checking the program. Uh, verification, what does it tell? It's not telling if the code will scan. There is a correlation. On, um, on the result of verification and scalability, but it's not directly uh, connected. It's, it's, uh, it's well, it, it can be done, but uh, it's not strict. So, the definition for verification would be, does the code meet a grid standardized criteria in scalability? And normally, there is quite amount of reserve uh, as long as you have uh, passing grades received as verification. Um, there's a question for you. How much are you willing to spend on verification? Not just in money, but in time and in effort. And what result, uh, uh, what will be the meaning of the result you, you'll be getting? If you have answer to this, you know uh, how to approach this, uh, this uh, area. I'll, I'll throw just a few options in. First is simplified. It's not even verification, but it's, it's test. Uh, and the second one is full verification that is complex and assessed costly in any way. Simplified verification can be done uh, by any imager, so uh, that's a CCD scanner, it's a camera uh, with some added software that will not just interpret the data that is encoded, but it will get some more information uh, regarding this symbol. Uh, these are the results from the uh, symbol data matrix with the Latin text that was already presented. You see the size of the matrix, uh, how much data was used and how much um, duplicate or, or check some information was used, the size of a model and, and some other data. So that is simplified verification. It tells much more than just scanning the code and probably uh, this will be enough for majority of, uh, of applications needed for medium-sized 2D codes. 2D codes. Uh, with, with this scanner you cannot uh, scan the big codes, uh, one on the billboard on, on, uh, on the house uh, presented before, because the optics of the camera uh, will not fit the application. Going into full verification, I already said it's much more complex. Uh, you need a dedicated device for this, and note that the oh, uh, the field of view, it, it's quite small. So you're really limited to uh, small symbols and let's say uh, middle-sized symbols. Otherwise, uh, you, can, you will not fit into field of, uh, of view of any devices produced now, uh, nowadays. 
there is a standard uh, methodology uh, for performing verification. It's ISO uh, 15215 for 2D, for 2D codes. And if anyone is interested in direct bar marking, there is not a full standard, but it's a technical report uh, that can be used for uh, verifying direct part uh, codes. It's much more complex because of the, uh, the system, uh, uh, the, um, the material used, and the reflection we get. It, the best reflection is always, is always black, white combination on paper. Yeah. yeah. So time to, to wrap it up. Uh, this is how the uh, verification reports look like. Uh, this is a great to get and a lot of parameters uh, that are measured. Uh, it's, if there are some problems in, in the code itself, analysis of these parameters will help uh, to, to re resolve the issue uh, uh, that can be identified by verification. What is done? Each and every field in, in metrics is checked. The center of the field is checked. Uh, for the parameters listed, and uh, we get the simple result as, uh, as we see in black and previous picture. What can go wrong? Uh, contrast, it's obvious what's going on. Modulation, when you don't have just black and white, but any shade of gray in between, that's called modulation, and again, if you print it on paper, this will not be a problem. Uh, in direct path mark marking, that's a whole different story. Uh, some deformations that can uh, that can uh, arise, but again, uh, on, uh, on printing on paper, this this will not be an issue. Pattern, yeah. Uh, if you don't have a good coding software, pattern can be wrong. You cannot miss a dot when printing, or I'm wrong. Now you cannot miss a dot when you're printing like this. Yeah, uh, for human it would be much easier if you if you, uh, if you're looking for changes in something that is more familiar to human form. Uh, redundance, some, something was already said. The basics is that part of the code can be missing and it still can be interpreted uh, the data that is included. Again, I think this this is not so important. Uh, and the last question for you. How big is your print error margin? You see here, uh, poor printed barcode. You see there is no edge definition. Uh, there is uh, what will result in, in bad modulation and unscannable barcodes. If you remember that uh, only one tenth, it's, it's not a phone, it's a... Uh, <laughs> It's my reminder that, that I really have to, to wrap it up now. Uh, small 2D code will be big as this. And if you compare the number of elements that will be put in this uh, technology, this would be, would be simply uh, useless. Uh, once again, for all codes that are used in marketing, in magazines or on, on billboards, it's not important uh, what's the operational range of scanner, but, but how good camera on your mobile phone is. So, this, uh, this is, yeah, this will be my last slide. Uh, just to sum it up, two barcodes are robust uh, for medium sized black and white symbols designed and printed with this technology, you can hardly fail. If you lose it, if, if you uh, into specific application, I don't know, um, aeroplane part marking or something, something like that, or marking a uh, medicine, uh, then it will be probably important uh, to have where your symbol is regarding verification results. But for all other uses, uh, I think uh, that that is not needed. Uh, yeah, there is no time to to have this last game or to answer, probably to answer on any questions if you have. But I'll be here, here today uh, till lunch and uh, I'll be more than happy.
to try to answer if you have any questions. Uh,